Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. We are here today to talk a little bit K-State basketball and what the Wildcats are trying to do with the final two scholarships that are open because there's a lot of buzz right now. You can check it out over at KSO. Uh, both of our on three national basketball guys, Joe Timpton and Jamie Shaw, have put in predictions for Uganda Onyinsu to commit to K-State. This is one that we said going back to last week. Things were starting to look really good for K-State, trending in that direction, and it does seem like that is something that could happen uh, in the near future based on the intel that uh, our on three national guys have. And we'll talk when that, when and if that happens, what that means for K-State and what that looks like. But we said last week that he was one of the guys on this list of the top transfers remaining that you should really want because of what he does and what role he would serve, he would be that traditional big that you could bring in, have multiple years of eligibility remaining, and you needed more depth at that type of position. He brings that. He's a great rim protector, also grabs a lot of rebounds for you, uh, and he did all that in just under 18, 18, 19 minutes of play per game at Kentucky this past year, and I think you should expect good things from him. So, if K-State can land on Yinsu, on Yinsu, which it seems like they are going to, you get one spot taken care of. You then have two spots left on, or one spot left on this roster to complete the two that are open right now. Uh, in which direction would you want to go next if you're K-State? And maybe you, I can give it to you like this, Drew. You can make it a little bit easier on yourself. You can rank out of those players. Give me a top three on what your wish list would look like. Uh, of the the players available on that best list right there. Oh boy. So assuming Onyenso ends up going to K-State, I think that that probably in my book would eliminate Coleman Hawkins. I just, I, I don't know how you could really make that fit because I, in a weird turn of events, you'd think that K-State kind of goes a little bit too, gets a little bit too big if they were to add Coleman Hawkins as well. Because I'm just not sure how he'd fit alongside a chore and an on Yenso. So I think that my number one would be Jameer Watkins from uh, Florida State. I just think that he's probably the perfect fit in terms of what K State's really looking for in their next spot because they probably need a wing and he's the best wing available. Six, seven can really fill it up, can really score the ball, can really shoot, can really defend. Uh, and he was uh, an NBA draft entrant that ended up uh, withdrawing his name from the draft, uh, and was one of, and was one of the last ones to do it. So I, I think that he's probably my number one. Number two, I know that he's not really like a true wing, but Wuga Poplar still being out there is kind of an intriguing name. Six four, he can also really shoot, and I'm really interested to see how Wuga Poplar could kind of explode at his next school because he was never the first or second option in his time at Miami. So to see him kind of be like a second, third option at a school like K-State would be kind of interesting. Uh, I also like Cam, Cam Christie from Minnesota. And it, it's pretty close between him and Wuga Poplar in that second, third spot for me. And to be honest, like Cameron Christie, the most interesting thing for me about him is that he actually has three years of eligibility remaining. So if he, if he were to end up staying, uh, he could be like a real big corner piece for the future and not just this next season. Yeah, I, I mean, that that's one that would be probably uh, a good look. And honestly, like uh, based on what's available and you kind of combine what I think could be done this year and moving forward, that would in, in a in a world where I'm not trying to be as realistic about this, that would be probably number one for me just because of the years that are left available there, three of them, uh, as opposed to just one from Watkins uh, is the way that I would kind of look at it. But I, I don't think that that is necessarily in play. We haven't heard a ton of noise uh, when it comes to uh, K-State and, and what will go on there. Now, here is one like fascinating thing uh, about how this will play out. I do think that we might be able to uh, have a conversation here about Arthur Kluma because I think people are going to be 
uh, interested in that. But I uh, number one for me in, in terms of my realism and what I think is in play would be Jameer Watkins. It seemed like for a stretch there, not many knew what exactly was going on. Maybe K-State had faded away there, but now they've kind of come back into it, it would seem. So he would be my number one. Coleman Hawkins would be my number two. I, I just really like Coleman Hawkins' game. I like the versatility. And I think that if you're talking about guys that could step up and maybe take over and lead in a bigger role, um, I think that he has a little bit more of that than Wuga Poplar does. And I know some people are going to be like, well, but like the numbers are are better there for Poplar. Poplar just a lot more consistent in terms of what he did on a regular basis when you look at his averages. Uh, but Coleman Hawkins has the ability to be the best player on the floor. And I, I get what you're saying about like the fit and you might end up getting too big. That's very possible with that. But Coleman Hawkins game, the way that he plays, it's not like a traditional 6'10 guy. Like I, if you needed to just go absolutely massive on the floor, you could get away with it with Coleman Hawkins because he has the size and the athleticism to do it. And obviously the offensive game, he can do about anything that you need from him. Uh, so I just really like a lot of, of what he does there. Um, and I think you could make it work. Now, if you go and look at what Illinois did this past season, like Coleman Hawkins never once played at the three in their 10 most used lineups. Um, so like that's something to keep in mind. Most of the time he was either playing the four or he was playing the five uh, and they were going a, a little bit smaller. But just that was based on what the personnel that they had. Like you look at their roster, they felt like they were better off because, you know, four of their five best players didn't touch six, nine, um, actually more than that. If you, if you want to get deeper into that, they, I mean, uh, in reality, they didn't have a single player this season that played that was taller than six, nine, except for Coleman Hawkins, Dane danger was six, nine. He, and he was the, the other big outside of that. It was, they were having to go a little bit smaller. So I think it can work with him. And then number three, I would agree with you. I do think Wuga Poplar is the guy, the shooting is really exciting there we talked about it every time we've talked basketball recruiting it's that the shooting has gotten so much better on this k-state team already and you would give big 12 teams legitimate fits with the amount of shooters that you would put on this team it would make it really tough for them and uh, to bring kaluma into this mix because i know that people are still probably wondering well like could he come back what, what's going to go on here i to me i just think like it's probably not going to happen. There are better options than Arthur Kaluma out there right now, but you could convince me that, hey, maybe having a little bit more retention and familiarity with guys on this roster isn't a bad thing, and certainly Arthur Kaluma could play a position that K-State could use. It would be beneficial to them this upcoming season. So I could be sold on that, and certainly if that's where this thing ended up, which, again, I don't think it's going to, Nobody should be disappointed about that. But I do think K-State, as we see, if they do land on Yenso, they have some really good options that they're hot on the trails of to fill that final scholarship spot. Yeah, I could be talked into bringing Arthur Kaluma back. And like, I, I would be more than okay with it. I just I just have my doubts about it happening at, at this stage. I just think that kind of where everything is going in that sense. It just seems like that's kind of just kind of been faded away. Uh, just there's a lot of factors going against K-State. Number one, he's, he's in the transfer portal. So that, that hurts right away. And then it's just going through the draft process. You don't see guys that enter the draft process and enter the portal usually come back to that original school. So I've kind of given up on that as well, but it is intriguing that there's a lot of names still out there. And I think that we're going to kind of see that this could be a fast and furious finish uh, because you had guys that were, that just pulled out of the NBA draft coming back to school that are in the portal. And I imagine that most of them want to just kind of be done and get to their next school and start their summer workouts and move in and kind of do all of that stuff in a hurry. So I, I would imagine that the, the roster is probably complete pretty shortly yeah do you want me to challenge you like i do whenever we talk football recruiting how many how many commits <laughs> by this date uh do we get the final two spots filled by 
we'll say a week from now, June 11th, next Tuesday, do you think that they're all filled by then? Maybe not by June 11th, but you could talk me into by Father's Day. By Father's Day, I, I could be talked into that. I, I just think that with how everything is going and how calculated everything has kind of been with Don Yenso visit even being broken during the dead period, that I, I wouldn't be surprised if another visitor comes in pretty quickly and ends up committing and signing and all, all of the things and case eight's roster is full. Yeah. Uh, that, that makes sense to me. I also want to point out to people that the Royals lose six of seven and drew hops on the Braves bandwagon. He's going with the Braves today. Uh, so well, the, the Braves have been worse. So I got, got to support them. Yeah. It's my girlfriend's shirt too. So I just, it was the first shirt that I saw in my closet this morning. I was like, ah, brave shirt. We'll, we'll, we'll rock this one. Good point. So, the Braves are only nine games over 500. The Royals are still 11. So yeah, Braves are worse and, and lost to Cunha. So yeah, that's true. Thoughts and prayers to, it, to Ronald Acuna. RIP, it, not dead. It, it's a, it's a split fandom. So, you know, it's fun when the Braves are good, when the Royals were bad. Now it's like, I have two good baseball teams and, wow, and, wow. and, and, you know, when I've gone to the Braves, they've won. And the last, like, four times I've gone to the Royals, they've also won. So maybe I'm just the good, the good luck charm. That's quite the streak because uh, I have. it's been a long time since I've seen a Royals win in person. Uh, and I, it's not like I just don't go to games. Uh, I, I go to, to quite a few. This is a, a longstanding streak. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see them in Texas in a couple weeks. So we'll see uh, if they can – they can pull it off then, and then I'll, I'll. I think I'm going to see him play like the White Sox after the All Star game or something. Oh, so there you go. If they don't win that game, you shut it down. Cursed. Yeah, I'm probably not ever going to another game again. Well, but the, uh, the issue, your issue is that you keep going to opening day. The the yeah. Royals, I feel like, have struggled on opening day at home recently. Well, so the I the I first went to opening day 2019. Not nobody cares about this, but I first went on 20, in 2019. <laughs> Brad Keller shut down the White Sox. They got a win. I did not go, obviously, in 2020 uh, for obvious reasons. 2021, I did not go. I, there was an embargo on uh, me leaving Wichita, basically. Uh, my wife was like, mm, nope, we're trying to buy a house. Like, no extra expenses. I'm like, I don't know. I think, I think we, I don't think it's going to impact us buying a house if I spend $30 on a Royals ticket. But <laughs> didn't get to go. They beat the Rangers. Then I went the next year, Bobby Witt Jr.'s debut saw his, you know, go ahead hit uh, in the eighth inning. So they, they had success the last two years. It has not gone well for me though. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what uh, comes about it. And uh, hopefully they uh, get a big win over Cleveland tonight. So that'll, uh, that'll do it for us. That's talking baseball with Mason and Drew at the end of this. And uh, if you want more about the stuff that you're actually wanting us to talk about, and that's K-State football and basketball, head over to kstateonline.com. Tons of great updates from Drew on visitors from the weekend and also guys that just got offers and camped at K-State. And we'll keep you in the know and give you the news immediately when K-State gets a commitment. Could it be Uganda and Yenso? We'll find out. Uh, also, I want it to be known out there. We don't have to say Uganda the whole time. It's He goes by Ugo. So Ooh. that makes it a lot easier on people. Um, so Ugo is, is what we can refer to him as if uh, the Wildcats end up getting him. And if, if for some reason he's not a cat, then – We'll probably never say his name ever again. So that's that's up to him to decide on if he wants us to do that or not. So you know, Wyatt's going to have a lot of uh, practicing to yeah. do if, if you got to ends up coming to K-State because holy, holy cow. Yeah, the uh, pronunciation guide this upcoming season, it will be doing some serious work because, I mean, you have you do you do get the benefit of having like a couple of Joneses on the team. Uh, and like not and the first names aren't crazy either. They're just like standard, like CJ and Max. You, you've heard that name a time or 70 in your life. Uh, and, but then, you know, some of the others you gotta, you're going to have to watch out because, uh, I've been saying Brendan Hausen's name wrong the entire time. I thought it would be Hausen. It's Hausen. I found yeah, that, that out over the weekend. That was upset of the year. Yeah, that, that blew my mind. That was kind of like when uh, I figured out that Kyle Rockers' his name is Rockers and not Rakers. Like when, yeah. when I heard when I heard Hawson's name, I was like, 
are are we sure that that's correct? Yeah, I I still want to have a conversation with with Kyle's family about that. I'm I, it throws me out every time I hear that. But I will also uh, say that however Chris Kleiman says it is how I will I will say it because <laughs> that man does not care how you pronounce your name. He pronounces it his way, or he's just not going to say your name at all. So take your pick. <laughs> Drew's laughing. He, he knows it's true. I mean, he's still yeah. uh, in all these years. His, his, there are a couple guys that he's just like, this is the name that I thought you had. I'm going to roll with it. Yeah, Nate Matlock was the one that just <laughs> keeps coming to my mind. Is that like for four years? That's all we heard, and everybody would just look around and like, and nobody wants to correct him. But it's yeah. like, oh god, yeah, that 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 always does crack me up. Do you think that's why he transferred? <laughs> <laughs> somebody should ask no yeah no because last year like midway through the season he he switched it up and said his name correctly so maybe that's why maybe so maybe may, may, I'm, i don't know they're just uh fascinating things uh with with names in college sports and the amount of like i i have tried trust me to find pronunciations for these guys at times not every athletic department is as good as K-State is about just like having that readily available for you. Uh, some of them, it's like they're not there at all. So then I'm going and I'm watching like crappy highlights and waiting for 15 minutes for them to say the, the player's full name. Uh, so sometimes you just don't get it. But again, that shout lot. Out, go ahead. Shout out to Mitch Fortner for uh, the, the Moby E.K. Garuka yes. pronunciation because I wouldn't have even known where to start. Yeah, publicly, I've never said that name wrong. It's never come out of my mouth wrong because I used to not ever attempt it, and then he committed, and Mitch had it instantly uh, with his with his JUCO head coach. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Mitch, which classic PA guy move right there. So we'll get out of here because nobody cared about the last five minutes of the show. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. Back again tomorrow with more news and talk on the Cats.